Here we go. Yeah. It's wow. Hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. Yep. Live simple, live free. Yeah. I did a video last week. It was called um, How to Make a, Make Money on Social Media. Yeah. And it was not a Thrive Life recruiting video. I wasn't trying to recruit you for Thrive Life. It was talking about how anyone can make money on social media and telling you a little bit how to do that through a system called Attraction Marketing. Well, just learning how to do business <clears throat> online. Right. Because that's the way the world's going. And I, and I figured that it would be interesting to anyone who's a, an entrepreneur and who wanted to uh, to be able to sell whatever your product or, pr or program is online. Sure. So that's why I presented that. But then I got a number of... of uh, well, okay, let me back up a little bit. As part of that presentation, I talked about our Thrive Life business and I... Didn't say anything about how much money we make or anything, but I just said that we are one of the top sellers in the company. And I think a lot of people, or some people, assumed because of that statement that we're making a boatload of money and we're rolling in dough. Yeah. That's just simply not the case. <laughs> we're making a good, um, comfortable living, but we're certainly not rolling in the dough. But the main thing is that several people said something like, well, so much for, for live simple, live free. Yeah. And that's what we want to address. Yeah. What exactly does live simple, live free mean? And does it mean living in a hovel when you don't have anything? Or, you know, what exactly does it mean? And yes, no doubt to others, our ways seem quaint. <laughs> but today, of all days, it is brought home to me. It is no bad thing to celebrate a simple life. There's um, a whole idea of minimalism, um, which a lot of times for people has meant living in a very small little place with like two plates and two forks and, and knives and, and two cups and very few possessions, keeping life very simple. We follow people that travel around in a vehicle that have virtually no possessions. And there is something to be said for not being held down by any possessions. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are not and never have been like minimalists like mm -hmm. that. No, no. Even when we lived in our tiny house, we had more than two plates and two cups. Yeah, yeah. We, you <laughs> know, we, we had a complete set of dishes, and then Elizabeth, Elizabeth discovered the Polish pottery that we love, so we had a second complete set as we right. slowly bought that stuff. Very, very slowly got my set of Polish pottery. Yeah. So what exactly does Live Simple mean? doesn't mean living minimalist. It just doesn't. It basically means to live below your means. And, and to me, an aspect of the whole Live Simple, Live Free is that in however way you're doing it, you have taken the stress out of it. Right. Yeah. The, well, the, yeah, it the means... The freedom comes it, from... It yeah. means to live below your means, which means you don't ever use credit. Yes. And that's where the Live Free comes in. I've also had people say, what are you talking about? Nobody can live for free. I'm not talking about living for free. I'm talking about living free from the stress and the bondage of debt and financial issues because you've got so many bills. Or, or actually, not, not only that, and that's the main thing, but also just not becoming so encumbered with possessions that your life has to be protecting them, guarding them, cleaning them, collecting them, right. figuring out where to put them. No, it's... It, you know, we've said this many times, and we're going to say it again. I think we've really learned that life does not consist of possessions. It consists of relationships and experiences. Right. You know, but, but really, as Bill was saying, I think the main thing that gives such a sense of freedom is to not be living above your means and not be encumbered by debt. Yeah. You know, when you look at uh, lottery winners, I don't know the numbers, but a, a surprisingly large percentage of them go bankrupt within five years, even though they've won millions. Yeah. Why do they do that? <clears throat> because they're not living simple. They're not living below their means. Now that they've got that money, they go out and build, buy a, you know, a 37 room mansion and four brand new vehicles to put in their four car garage and all that kind of stuff. And they do it all on credit right. and they get in trouble 
and they end up in bankruptcy even though they got all that money coming in because they're not living a simple life. So mm -hmm. living a simple life basically means only buying the things that you can afford with cash. It doesn't mean don't buy anything. It only means don't buy it if you can't afford it cash. Right. And, and learn that it's really worth it in life to just be patient. And if it takes a little while to save enough money for something, you're going to really enjoy it even more when you can finally, can finally do it. You know, um, there, we, we had been told in so many different ways before we kind of had everything crash and we had really been living without, without any credit, you know, at all since then. Um, and we'll talk about our little house. We're not going to leave that out. But um, there was a feeling like, well, you know, that you just you really have to have good credit. You know, there's just so many things you're going to need it for. Even you can't even rent a car without a real good credit card, you know. But we have found, and it's been, what, eight, 13 years now, there has never been a situation so far that we have been in where we absolutely had to have a credit card. In 13 years in since, 13 since years, we've had right. any, cre any credit or used any credit at all. Right, right. Um, we've done a lot of travel, mm -hmm. a lot of it, you know, on uh, international trips for thrive life and all that kind of stuff and we would rent car every single time at the destination we never had a problem doing that with the debit card right i mean i had to go out and see my mom many times um when she was getting weak and starting to you know mm -hmm. to go and um i we always rented a car once we were out there you know um that just people like the clock we'll let it chime <laughs> i love that clock it's going to be done in a second <laughs> But my bong, bong, bong is broken. I miss the bong, bong for the number of hours. But anyway, the, the point is that we have never uh, run into a situation where we absolutely had to have a credit card. Right. You know, um, and we don't really have bad credit um, at all anymore. We just have very we have no credit, little credit. <laughs> yes, like no credit. <laughs> you know, so and we don't care because we don't yeah. ever plan on using it again. Yeah. Now, you know, with the with our income the way it is, it's been growing steadily since, you know, we lost everything in the crash and we were we lived in that little tiny house and we were glad to get into that tiny little thing. We were very grateful to have a roof over our we head. We almost lived in, a, in our car. <laughs> yes, and when things crash like that, I mean, it felt like the hole, you had to look up to try to see the sky. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah. But Ooh. since then, our, our income has been slowly increasing every year, uh, thanks to Thrive Life and to YouTube and several other things going on. But as our income has increased, like I said, we're certainly not rich, we're certainly not rolling in it, but we're, we're comfortable now to the point where we could have bought a house twice the size of the one that we live in. Oh, yeah, without any problem at all. We could we go out and buy at least one and maybe even two new vehicles and afford the payments on them. But we haven't done that. No. We are no. still driving 15 to 20 year old cars. Yep. We still have a 15 year old travel trailer. Yep. We still, <laughs> we're still living in this house, which is a 900 square foot house, even though we could easily afford twice as much. Yeah. Because we are living simple. Yeah. We're living way below our means. And what we're doing is taking all of that money that we could have been spending on new cars and a bigger house and sinking it all into trying to pay off this house. Because when we moved in, we had been debt free for a long time, for, yeah. since 08. When we moved in here, we did take on some debt. We had saved a lot, and we got some money for selling our tiny house, but we had we still had some debt here. Right. But we've been concentrating like a laser for the past 14 months right. on paying off this mortgage, and it looks like it's going to be paid off probably next month. Yeah, if not next month, like after the month after, um, it'll be completely paid for. Yeah. Now, this is a very, very small little place. It's I think it feels like a mansion, but it's not very big. Um, we got a very good price on it. We were able to work things out. Um, Yes, if we had had to go with a real traditional loan situation, our credit situation might have been a little bit rough, um, but it hasn't been. And um, we were able to put a lot of money down. So, um, yeah, it, you know, we had to make the decision to have um, some um, outstanding debt to be able to even get this house so Pop could come and be with us. Right. But it has, we have been extremely careful to take every possible spare penny and put it into paying this house off. And so I would say that probably realistically between 14 and 16 months after we moved into here, um, it'll be completely paid for. Right. Um, so yeah, with our, with our larger income now, we could have afforded to buy a bunch of other stuff, but we're just not. We're continuing 
to live simple yeah. so that we can continue to live free, to live free from debt, to live free from the stress and the bondage of debt. And that's what it's all about. That's what live simple, live free means. Right. And, you know, um, i got to admit, it is an in not only knowing that I'm going to have the money I need to pay whatever I need to pay, um, but just to know, honestly, that when someone needs something um, and they really need our help, we can help them. We're okay to do that, you know. And, um, you know, I, I think about it and I think, well, you know, we really have a very low, um, you know, uh, expense life, I think, in general. Even, even for, like, lower middle class, um, you know, in our, in our environment. Um, you know, but we do have to really make sure that we actually pay for things. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not like we've got like super scads of extra money because, um, you know, well, for one thing, we are very, very happy um, to give the Lord his part. Um, and he has been so faithful to us. So yes, we just, tithing is something where it's such a joy and we know it's going to good things and you can't outgive God. You just can't. So that's just something that we're, we just are determined about. But, you know, I still make sure that all my quarterly tax payments go in. You know, we're old enough now we don't have a bunch of dependents or, or things like that. You know, or my tax money has to go in and it's always paid on time. I never have to pay penalties or, or interest or anything like that. Um, but if we want something, we have to outright pay for it. So nothing is ever put on a credit card. And if we have to repair the car, we pay for it cash. We know that if we're going to replace a vehicle, we're going to do it cash. So um, even though I'm grateful that if I need to go get something, I can go do it, or I can help somebody out, um, we probably, if you looked at our lifestyle and then you looked at a typical sort of middle class fam you know, couple living in their house or whatever, it would seem like that we're living so much lower than, than they are, and they might not make even our income. But it, nothing we're doing is based on any kind of credit. And I know that it would be easy to have a bigger lifestyle if we had a mortgage, if we had car payments, um, if, if you know things went on to a credit card, if trips went on a credit card and repairs. And, and our bottom line could still look pretty good. Our minimum payments could not be all that bad. But we would always be vulnerable to somehow not being able to pay those bills. Mm -hmm. You know, something happening. I mean, I, I, I know what it feels like when all of a sudden everything crashes. And I'm not ever stressed if we just have to live really simply or I don't have a whole lot of money. I mean, I grew up pretty, you know, happy poor. And, I'm, and I was poor through college and we were very poor during our early years of marriage. And it's, it's kind of an exciting thing to see what you can do with a little bit. But what stresses me so much is when I do owe a bill and I can't pay it. That is very stressful for me. Right. And I have not had to face that now in a long time. And that is a freedom that I appreciate a lot. Right. You know, um, don't, you know, it, it, even living in this, this little bit bigger house, you know, I have walls now and I have a table and a we have a room bigger, for bed. A little bit bigger compared to our tiny house. Yeah, I mean, we went from 250 square feet to about 900 square feet. Pop's got his own room. And so that kind of, that's his square feet. You know, he's got one of the, he's got the biggest bedroom. But anyway, um, I still, we still don't want to become so encumbered with just stuff. So even though I've got mementos around and it doesn't, you know, it, it has a kind of a settled and loved, full of stuff feeling at times, but everything in here was chosen because it's really beloved, uh, brings a lot of joy, but we're just not accumulating things and we're not going to that. I had to learn when we were in the tiny house that if something comes in, something goes out. And there's, we still kind of try to live that way, right. you know, um, so I guess the main thing is I just wanted to address those who thought from my last video that we're rolling in dough and that we're going to start buying all of this stuff and that we'll no longer be living simple or living free. And that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to see any difference in our lifestyle, living style at all, yeah. um, because we're not planning on expanding that. Any additional money that we have after we, you know, uh, pay the house off, um, I might buy a motorcycle. If he wants to save up and get himself a good used motorcycle, that would make me happy. That's but, fine. <laughs> but any money that, well, that we can so save much. once the 
we finish the crunch of paying off this house is just going to go into investments for long term for retirement and stuff like that. You know, so. Well, and you know, some more projects that we kind of would like to get done That's around true. here. We will do it with cash. Yeah, we talked about putting and sweat in a, equity. <laughs> putting an addition on the back to expand the kitchen. That'll just all be done cash. And, and you know why I want that done in the kitchen? I'm actually really fine in there now. My washing machine fits. I'm fine. But I'd like to be able to have company around the table and not be maybe quite so squeezed in with everybody. So it's going to be nice to kind of move the washing machine out a uh, little ways and just have a little bit more room just for people because I, I enjoy that so much, you know. And you know something, um, we've talked about this before with budgeting and things like that. Um, another thing is that is that even though we don't have any, like like a car loan, we make a big, big car payment every month. It's as big as if I bought a fairly fancy car. And what that does is it goes into a specific um, place on my spreadsheet as far as savings. Um, I always have money set aside for extra medical expenses. I save for Christmas every year, just a little bit at a time. Um, just uh, if we know we've got a trip coming up that's gonna be kind of important, I set money aside for that way ahead of time. And so even though I'm not making a car payment, by putting a pretty good chunk, I mean, I don't even know if I should tell them how much it is, because car payments are pretty expensive. It's not as much as a new car payment. Really? Holy cow. They must be terribly... You could easily big. spend five or $600 a month on a car payment. Wow. Well, anyway, I'm putting a big chunk. Um, not that big. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but there's always money in the car fund. So that if we do have a repair, we know we've got the money to do it. And we are trying to save toward someday needing to replace vehicles. Because we right. will have to do it someday. Right. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that by truly getting the money ahead um, and being kind of ready for it, you know, um, I, I don't have a ton, ton extra. <clears throat> you know, because just because I don't have a car payment doesn't mean I can't go, woohoo, I don't have to have a car payment, and so let's go on a trip or let's go let's go buy something or whatever um, because I'm going to have to pay for a car at some point. So I might as well save ahead. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, one of our dreams for all of you guys is to yes. be able to live simple and free like we do. And it was a long, hard haul for us to get to this point, and I know many of you... It's the same way. Many of you are struggling with debt, and it just seems impossible. That's why I did that video series a couple months ago about how to get out of debt. Yeah. And uh, you can get out. The average person can get out of debt, including a mortgage, in about seven years using that system. So I'll put a link down below for that if you'd like to see that if you haven't seen it, because that's the most important thing is to get out of debt. And a lot of people that are struggling with debt feel like, oh, I just I need to make more money, but reality is you're probably not making enough money and what you need to do is decrease your debt payments. Yeah, and so. possibly just do some decreasing on spending. You right. know, find other fun ways to do things that don't necessarily have to cost so much. Right. And I'll tell you, you can get completely out of debt, but if you don't change how you look at it, it can be very difficult to stay that way. That's why like consolidation loans and stuff like that can be a pitfall. Mm -hmm. You know, you end up using up equity out of your house because you're going to finally get all of your credit cards paid off. But if you don't stop using the credit cards, he talks about this in his, his seminar, if you don't stop using the credit cards, you're going to be back in debt with all this equity used up on your house. You know, um, you just, you got to dig in and decide, you know what? You know, I want to. I want to give God a chance to take care of things in my life. If I can't do this right now, then I'm. I'm not going to do it, and I'm going to. You know, do my best to be ahead for emergencies. But if if I can't afford to buy something, then God's going to have to work something out for me, because I will not use debt to do it. I do feel very incredibly blessed to be able to have this home. That that dogwood tree gives me joy every season. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking forward to putting the garden in. I love living close to our kids and grandkids. Um, even if we could never travel again, or I mean, although we really would like to and we hope to, um, I feel so blessed just being here. Mm -hmm. And um, a life doesn't have to have too much stuff in it to be a joy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. There's our philosophy live simple, live free, is still going strong. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. You be blessed. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.